Alright guys, today's video is going to be on teaching you guys a little bit more of what is in the Android system and um, just how the Android system works. And the reason I'm doing this video is because I get so many questions on just basically people don't have any understanding of Android. So I'm hoping that this kind of gets them a little bit more up to speed on the Android operating system and just... Uh, where all the files are at, where everything is located to kind of give you guys a little bit more information so that you can figure this stuff out and you're not like asking all these kind of goofy questions. So this is just to help you guys out. Um, I hope this is informative for you. So let's go ahead and get started here. So I've got my Droid Razor HD right here. This has an unlocked bootloader on it. I'm going to try to go over some things that work with unlocked bootloaders and things that work with locked bootloaders so that you guys can a little bit see a little bit of the difference on how that stuff works too. Hopefully this video won't be too awfully long. Alright, so um, first things first, let me go to my computer and pull up some information for you guys to get you guys a good understanding of this system, Android system. All right, so the first thing I want you guys to understand is right here. These are the Android partitions. Just like your computer has a C drive and maybe has a D recovery drive. Well, that's a lot of times how that works. There are two different partitions, partitions on the same exact hard drive. So if you think of your, your Android phone as a hard drive, these are the partitions that are in it. So this would be like a boot drive, would be like a C drive. It's, well, not really a C drive, but... This system would be more like a C drive. And then right here, this um, in Windows I'm talking, this is recovery, and that would be more like a D drive, which is your recovery drive normally. And so they're, 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 they're marked off. So you have boot, system, recovery, data, cache, and miscellaneous. So let me kind of go over this, these uh, different sectors here. Um, so the boot partition is the first thing that kind of boots up and gets your system rolling. System is the actual Android um, operating interface, I guess you could say. It's, it's everything that's in t contained in Android. So if you get a good idea, that's, that's, what, that's what's contained in system. Recovery is normally stock recovery or a custom recovery like Torp recovery. Data is all of your apps that you've downloaded and all of your settings and passwords and everything. That's all contained in data. And then cache. Cache contains... Um, basically what it does is it stores stuff in there so that you can your phone can access it faster. So if you wipe cache, it just gets rid of that saved memory uh, so your phone accesses it quicker and it'll just repopulate it as it as it goes through and you start using applications again. So every, anytime you wipe cache, it doesn't affect the phone in any sort of way. It just makes things like maybe boot a little slower until it gets back into cache and they repopulate. And then you have miscellaneous which is other stuff which you hardly ever mess with, you don't ever use this. So on an unlocked bootloader, boot, system, and recovery are all flashable with these files. You can do a boot image, a system image, or a recovery image. And you can flash all these things because your bootloader is unlocked. If you have a locked bootloader, these are non-flashable areas. You don't have access to them because the bootloader is locked. So that give, might give you a little bit of information on that. So then, if you kind of got this, and if you guys want to read specifics on all those areas, this is on my website right here, rootjunkie.com, and it's, it's uh, under Understanding Android, and you can read specifics on all those. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the boot sequence. Now this is going to get a little technical, but it just helps you guys to understand what uh, and how Android is functioning for you. So the first thing that happens when you power your phone on is you boot ROM. That's the first thing that happens, and it loads your bootloader, which, like I said, if it's locked, you can't do much editing with those other things up here, boot, system, and recovery. But if it's unlocked, you can change them. Then it boots your kernel right here and proceeds on to step four, which is your init, and goes through that and all these other steps all the way down to getting your system fully functioning down here and step six. Um, in it is something that I've seen that people can edit and basically make their stuff boot first if you edit in it even though your bootloader is unlocked so there's some tweaks you can do and hacks that a lot of guys use with the in it um, so just for basic information but kernel right here if you have a locked bootloader you can't change 
So if you want to run a custom ROM like Saijin Mod, um, you can't, most of those require a custom kernel, and you can't do that on a locked bootloader unless somebody finds a way to hack or get around that. Um, so just some basic information. And also if you want to look at exact great detail on all of those boot sequences, startup sequence, there's great information right here on the site that you guys can kind of read through. And it just gives you a good understanding of what you're actually looking at. Recovery right here. If you flash a custom recovery to your device right here, and you have an unlocked boot bootloader, all you're doing is you're editing recovery. If you flash something there and it's bad, it doesn't work, you just don't have recovery. Your, your boot and your system are still there, and your data and your cache, everything else is still there. So it'll still boot up. You just, when you boot into recovery, it may fail because you installed something you shouldn't have installed on recovery. That being said, on the same hand, if you install something to system right here and it doesn't work, you'll still be able to get into recovery because you didn't change anything in recovery. And also if you wipe data, which is what it says, wipe data factory reset, you're wiping this partition, but you're not wiping system and you're not wiping recovery. So those two things should still function. So when you go in and you do a factory reset, it wipes data and it wipes cache and all these things are left alone. So the phone still boots, you still have your system, and you still have your standard recovery or custom recovery, whatever you installed. So it just gives you a really good understanding of what you're actually doing when you wipe certain theft. You're, you're, you're only wiping that partition, that's it. If you wipe system to flash around, you wipe data, you wipe cache, you wipe Delvic, um, you still have recovery and you still have boot. They're still there. So just, just so you guys understand what, what we're actually doing here. Um, so on a custom recovery, let me show you this. Okay, so here's my... Droid Razor, so I have a custom recovery installed, and they can get you can get into them different ways, but I'll just show you really quick here. So I'm going to reboot to recovery, and my phone is going to reboot into uh, twerp recovery. Should reboot very quickly because I have this flashed in that recovery partition. It's not bootstrapping into it, it's not any kind of hack to get into it, it's actually replacing my stock recovery. And that is why I don't like Ruler is so nice. Now you can actually physically replace that recovery. So you can get into this anytime. Whatever you do to your phone doesn't matter. You can always boot to this from a powered off state because the recovery partition never gets destroyed. That is why it is so nice. So if I go in here and I'll just show you, if I go to wipes, whoop, yeah, we'll go to wipes. And now you can see right here it says factory reset, wipe data, wipe cache, wipe Delvic and you can go ahead and you swipe that across and that wipes off all those those partitions that's it um, and it won't wipe out anything else than that so it's just just a good way to understand what you've got here so this is on a custom recovery with unlock bootloader now let me kind of try to explain to you guys how it works when you use something like safe strap I'm gonna do my best here so let's check that I'm gonna go ahead and reboot we will reboot the system I was saying I was going to explain to you guys SafeStrap, which is a application that basically gives you a recovery system. This device is a Droid Bionic. It does not have an unlocked bootloader, and because of that, you have to, if you want to get a custom recovery installed, you have to kind of go about it a whole other direction. Here, we can just go into Fast Boot by powering off and holding all your volume up and down and your power, and go into boot mode and then go into fast boot and we can just flash the file the custom recovery from our computer and it's there boom done super simple we have custom recovery installed okay it replaces that recovery partition right here in green and we're done custom recovery is done super simple so on this device the bionic the only way to do the same thing is first we have to get root access on our phone okay so this is going to require um, somebody making up and finding an exploit on this device that's something that they can exploit to install um, the SU binaries and an app called Super User or Super SU. So what they're actually physically doing, because everybody asks me, is this going to wipe my phone? Is this going to erase my applications? Am I going to lose my contacts? Everybody's always asking me these questions. So let me explain what root is exactly. Um, as best as I can describe it. So what I'm going to go into here is go into a file browser. That's what this is right here. And root 
is the root of the file system. So the root of a file system on Android device is always just slash. On a computer, it's C slash, C slash is the root of your file system. So on an Android device, it's just slash. And this is the root of this file system right here. Okay, so all that they're doing when they when you get root permission on a phone is you're actually um, going to get system and then XBIN and then they're actually installing SU, which is a file if I can find it here. Da, 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 there's a lot of files in here. SU 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 where is SU? Gotta be getting close. Right here, Sue, right by my thumb. Sue. All they're doing is they're installing that file right there in System XBIN Sue. And then they're installing the application. And this right here gives this phone root permission or root access. And then Sue manages that root so that only the applications that Sue or Super Sue or Super User allow get that access. Because originally, when you get your phone, you don't have access to all these files here in system or in the root of your device. You only have access to this one, SD card extension, and we'll go back, and SD card, this one. You have access to those two spots, and getting root access gives you access to the entire phone, and now you can edit every file on here, which you obviously don't want to do unless you know what you're doing because you can really mess this phone up and it won't even work anymore but that is what getting root permission is you're installing sue and you're installing an application the the what you're doing with it whatever the hack is that you're using to do that is just accomplishing that task unless it says different that it's going to wipe some of your phone it's not okay so everybody's clear on that so once we have root permission by getting that sue binary installed and your super user application which looks like right where's it at right here super user right by my thumb so you have those two things uh, installed you got that that's all you're doing so now that we don't have a uh, uh, unlocked bootloader we have to use something that does like a bootstrap so what this does is it injects right here safe strap it, it, you push install recovery and it injects files into pre-install that tell your phone to boot into SafeStrap before it boots into the operating system. So you're, 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 you're interrupting the process of it booting and doing what it, you tell it to before it boots the system. So you're not, you're not replacing your re stock recovery you're just hacking the process of startup is basically the best way you can understand it. So you're actually installing that. I'll show you it's system. We're in our device, so we're gonna we're they're installing it in pre-install. You're actually installing SafeStrap into pre-install, just so you guys can get a good feel for it. It it it, it messes with stuff in there. It also creates um, SafeStrap folder. Should be on your SD card right here, and you have some stuff right there and twerp and everything when you start making recoveries so basically what you're doing right here is you're not replacing your recovery you're you're actually editing system files with root permission to accomplish kind of stopping the process in the middle of boot up to go into recovery so we're going to reboot and just show you this power off all right we're going to go ahead and reboot Hash code is developer straight safe strap awesome dude you really came up with some real sweet stuff with this kind of thing right here um, So you're gonna hit the button down there at the bottom So he created this splash screen to boot before the boot logo does or not the boot logo the boot animation does and then gives you an option to, to boot into safe strap and like I said bypassing the normal boot up process um, Or just letting it boot normally and it'll boot just to your standard stuff so that is what you've got here now same thing in here when you go to wipes you wipe cache like i said it's fine it just repopulates later delvic same kind of deal it'll just repopulate on first boot up factor reset just wipes your data partition system that wipes your system partition on here um, so just so you understand what you're actually doing 
we're going to go back and go ahead and go ahead and reboot the device. All right, to wrap this up, uh, let me just explain one last thing here. When you are flashing a ROM, let me just explain to you guys what you're actually doing, okay? Um, again, we have our partitions right here. Normally, you wipe system, you wipe data, and you wipe cache. So those three systems get wiped off when you flash a ROM. Um, and what happens here is this one just repopulates as the ROM gets installed. Same with this one. As you put in your data and stuff like that, it just gets repopulated. This gets repopulated as you use applications. And system actually gets formatted and replaced with the ROM. That's basically all you're changing. You're changing your system. Now, if you have a, a locked bootloader, is to do that with a bootstrap recovery, some kind of a custom recovery that's not installed here, but it's installed here and hacks the startup and allows you get into, to get into custom recovery. I've seen recoveries that allow you to get in there by using your um, powered off battery charge logo when that thing powers up. I've seen a bunch of different ways to get into your custom recovery since you have a locked bootloader, but that's how you do it. And then obviously if you have a unlocked bootloader you can flash any of this stuff right here these three so the last thing I want to get over right here is all right, unlocked bootloaders are able to flash boot flash system flash recovery just directly from your computer they don't have to be signed you can flash anything if it's labeled system system image you can flash it to those partitions um, if it's the right thing it'll obviously function if it's the wrong thing it won't but you have access to do that because your bootloader is unlocked. If you have a locked bootloader, you have access to none of this. Um, and the only way to flash system is with a custom recovery. So I hope that kind of clears those things up there uh, for you guys a little bit. So in all this, hopefully you can see what you're dealing with with partitions. A little bit more idea what you're doing in custom recovery or replacing recovery on unlocked bootloader what the benefits are to an unlocked bootloader which are the uh, ability to flash these partitions that's really the benefit um, and then a little bit of your boot sequence so you can get a little bit of an understanding of where the bootloader is what the bootloader is where the kernels are at and when in where in the process they actually boot up and to understand why without an unlocked bootloader you cannot flash a kernel now, SafeStrap allows you to run SafeStrap kernels, which are Kexic kernels, which is a very cool feature that Hashcode has put in there. So he does have technically custom kernels in his ROMs. So that is really, really sweet if they're Kexic ROMs. So, and then just a little bit more understanding of your init and where you can finally get in here and possibly hack into the process to interrupt the boot sequence to allow you guys to boot into a custom recovery. And just a little bit of your Delvic VM and virtual machine and just a bunch of little information in here to really understand this process and great reading as well. So I hope you guys like this video. I hope it will give you a lot of informative information without too much rambling on my part. And um, if you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Check me out right here at rootjunkie.com, which is actually the site I'm on right here in the background. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.